Welcome back to Face TV, ladies and gents. I'm DDK, joined by James, of course. Would you expect anything less at the moment? We have to finish this, James. We've got to finish what we started. We have two more days left of this super week here for the Face It League. And now we are moving on to Hellraisers versus NIP. It's going to be cash. Yesterday, we saw what Hellraisers had to, had to do on cash. Um, can they do it again? Interesting question. They are going to be out for revenge as well because Nip on their home side versus Hellraisers, they beat Hellraisers 16-2 on overpass. Obviously, I doubt Hellraisers were prepared for that, but they, you know, we, we've seen what they've done to Titan, but was it one-off or can they do the same this time? You know, once again, the Titan were a team who went for full-on set plays there, had nobody watching their back and just got shot in the back of the head a bunch of times. Nip, I don't think are going to have the same approach to this map, so it may be a lot harder. I expect it will be a lot harder for Hellraisers. Yeah, I don't see that Hellraisers would get some of the rounds in the same ways that they got them against Titan, because there were lots of those moments where, um, who was it? I think it was simple, actually. He'd get boosted over, like, you know, the, the boost spot uh, from the CT side of mid. And there was just nobody there. There's like nobody there. Like in really early points of the round, that's usually something that's really easy to punish. But oh, oh, this way, odds, odds. Um, yeah, I, I, it looks like people are regaining faith in Hellraisers. It, if it's, this was like two days ago, I would have expected that to be like 30, 70 or something. They do have the power of simple as well. And I mean, with regards to AWP, we saw what, what he did with M4s in the CT side yesterday, but AWP is going to be very serious on this. And if he does rotate, I mean, we can see he can play B, but if he rotates around the map, then uh, Nip are going to be in trouble. Yeah, Simple is is really cool to watch. He's uh, very, very much enjoyable. an up-and-coming up and talent, up potential like up-and-coming uh, like superstar. So it's going to be really cool to follow his career and see how he develops. And Early on, when they they you know booted out Dren, they picked up Simple, and I was like, oh, but Dren's really good. <laughs> like, why would you remove a Dren? That guy is really, really good. And 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 it's like, oh, this is why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, he is bringing something that Dren just couldn't to the team, even though Dren was really good. And uh, still, you know, the question is, is still there for Hellraisers? When will they find their consistency? Indeed, they haven't found it yet. They were a team who were put together to literally just kill Nip and everyone else, basically. You know, Edward was there a while ago. He's gone as well. So uh, it still remains to be seen if they will find their form because uh, they haven't found it yet. But uh, maybe they found it. Who knows? Well, it's knife time. It's time for knife time. Time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't even care who wins the knife round. I just want to see this game start already. Does, does the team need to win the knife round? Well, I do, uh, these I two specific teams. I prefer, like personally, I prefer starting on CT on this map. It just feels better to start CT on this map than it does. Of course, I mean, the they I mean, want a bit more biased. <coughs> Generally, you want to start on the CT side, but yeah. do like we saw how as well. we saw how really you know Mirage was uh, def determined by versus Pro CT side. Do we have that thing going on between these two teams, or is it uh, not like that? Because I mean. Virtus Pro shout out the opposing team on th when they were on the CT side of Mirage. I'm wondering if we are going to see a shutout from either of these two teams. I think I think Nip are too <coughs> strong to be shut out. Well, this is the thing as well. Yesterday we saw Hellraiser start CT. That's where they they built the sickness that they that they showed us all. We didn't really get to see them play T. We didn't really get to see T. And uh, NIP, I definitely think that. There could be problems uh, for them when, you, when it comes to players like Simple, when it comes to some of the picking uh, strength of Hellraisers. So we'll have to see if that's abused and how that actually works out with the setups of NIP or whether NIP will change things up. We're into the pistol round already and Forrest wants to make himself a bit of a cheeky peek into the A main and he's going to get pushed out but the teammate will smoke it off. So NIP, they're, they're controlling the situation well so far but Hellraisers, they can't be denied from the side just charging in right now. We're going to see three kills go the way of the Hellraisers as it is just Kucha who died for them and Freiburg and Fifth Lauren left to try to save the day. But in comes Dozier from the back and Angel as well going to be able to just take off the lives of the last two players and we're going to see a 1-0 lead for Hellraisers at the start of the game. So that was a nice uh, flank there for Dozier. He was just hiding behind that CT box on the T side of it, waited for them both to pass and shot them in the back, so that was good from him. We saw a 2-1-2 two, two, um, play at the beginning of the round from Nip. We'll see what they choose to do on this eco. It's going to be a 2-1-2 two, a two, two again, and uh, four smokes. Yeah, so they're going to try and um, cut parts of the map off and play the close close range game with the 5.7s and the P250. Hellraisers are having none of that. They're just going straight in. They don't care about these pesky smokes, and they're going to be taking up uh, arms here as they make their way into the site. You can see Dozier finally returning onto Exist. 
And they've actually lost two men so far. Good work from NIP. Can they find something else? It's going to be Freiburg popping around the corner there, but he's going to get you know, covered in bullets. It's pretty pretty dangerous here for Get Ready. <laughs> you know he's there now. <laughs> that was brutal. And uh, Freiburg is going to just get the hell out of there. Maybe he can find another shot from another angle. But uh, two players dead. I mean, that's in minus 10k. And uh, so that's like... They, net, they, they netted like 6k did Hellraisers from that round, so it's pretty, pretty decent take for that. them. They'll take that on the, on the T side. If they plant a bomb, then they'll be uh, all good in the hood. We are going to see a large eco here from NIP. Two flashbangs and a bunch of P250s. A smoke from Forest. Sorry, not a flashbang. So we'll see. Kind of smoke off A main and uh, put the stack towards other parts, but the stack is coming in towards A main no less from the Hellraisers. However, the smoke will slow them down. So uh, this is a huge stack on the B side. They've completely disregarded A, and it's working out for the time being with only Markov around the A sides. So NIP just have to try to react here, or perhaps just, in fact, well, just stay put if, <laughs> if our racers do actually commit to the B play, which it looks like they're going to do, do just that. This could go very wrong very quickly for Hellraisers. And there it is, Fiflarian with the first kill onto Angel. There is the return, but do they know they've run into a stack just yet? They know now, but Hellraisers are dealing with it. They've lost already two players. That's okay, if they lose one more, things will get a bit risky, but it's uh, it's gonna be three that survive again. So overall, you know, NIP have killed four players in the last two rounds, which is about 20K of economic damage, but that's, uh, they're, they're still like more than fine right now. They can, they can, uh, Actually, NIP, can they force the eco if they win this round? Is, if, the, if the bomb goes down, I don't think so. But Simple's uh, got 6k. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it's, they should be fine. Yeah, but that, that was a, a quite valuable round there. That one smoke just uh, completely baited Hellraisers into pushing the other site. And while they didn't win the round, they did cause a lot of economic damage there, which is uh, something that may be profitable for them as we go further into this match. So Get Right is playing the position that we normally see the Laren playing here. And he's going to get two frags here in mid. Yeah, doing quite well there. It's a nice hold for, for NIP. <coughs> Definitely a very timely point in the match to find some stability. And Kuch is going to try his luck perhaps here, just looking at some angles, trying to see if they can work their way into the vents. But Get Right gets another one. That's already three kills for him. And Mark Clough, he really needs to inflict some damage here. He's absolutely, that's that's the prime objective right now. Just get some damage done. I mean, I don't think saving it's really worth it. NIP have uh, not got a lot of money. If he can take down one or two weapons, that's that's a really big deal. So going for it. Good shots, but it's not going to connect. This will find the kill. And NIP with almost a flawless round, just with Lauren uh, falling at... at uh, the opening start to the uh, to the round and NIP not so good on the money. How raises not so good on the money. He's going to come out on top now. This is uh, getting interesting. Let's, let's see what the initial play is here from both teams. We've got three how raises going towards A in the boost spot. Two of them are going to st stop. So I think they're going to boost onto the truck actually and look over. Indeed, they're going to look over the uh, to try and catch a CT peaking. And in the meantime, we've got a pretty huge spread across the map from Nip with uh, only Get Right in the uh, middle position. So since uh, they have played this round previously, or maybe this is just an adjustment specifically for Hellraisers, but normally, again, we'd see uh, Fiflaren playing in, in the mid position. But mm. uh, I think he normally plays there with an AWP, actually, so it might be that he's not there until they can uh, upgrade to the AWP. We do have and they have two on the B side as well, which is not so common, but they've given almost given up mid, but Get Right found an opening. He's going to be coming in potentially from the flank here through the vents, and this could absolutely crush the round, but it's going to be Angel gets boosted up. Wow. NIP would not expect that, and that's going to give them mid. So a wealth of options now to choose from as Angel looks up short. So it's just about the information now. NIP playing two to a site, and Fifth Lauren going to rotate around towards middle. So the bomb is slowly creeping towards the A-bomb site. So we have a uh, Markolov in the door as well. So we're going to have attack from three directions. But Forrest doesn't care. He's going to take out Kucha and slow the Hellraiser team down ever so slightly as the rotation does come in from the remaining CTs. Hellraisers need to push this site fast. Otherwise, they're going to run out of time to plant the bomb. We've got uh, 
Frag's coming in left and right here. Only Simple and Dozier remain. They do still have control of the bomb, but they need to get that frag. That is the bomb site open, but the bomb is down now. Dozier with 10 seconds, and uh, Freiburg's not going to peak here. And this is going to be a round loss for Hellraisers. Big gamble from Dozier there, just tr you know, not going straight for the bomb, and uh, it's going to be the round indeed for NIP. But uh, so much damage done to either team. Hellraisers, unfortunately, cannot buy. They play, they play that really, really slow. Like at towards the end, they just, uh, they, I, I think they're just waiting for one more pick. You know, they were hoping for a CT to peak, but uh, it just never came. And they ended up uh, losing the round for it. And now they're going to be, after a good start, they're going to lose their second round in a row. Again, and though, they can still keep NIP uh, down. They, they just need to get like three three frags on the board. And Hellraisers are still like super into the game. And, and NIP will have no momentum on the economy. And they already get the first kill there with Dozier. So that might just be a, a weapon... Uh, easily obtainable, but there is Get Right coming in from the vents. So you can maybe stop this, and he will. So good play there from Get Right to lock down the weapon in vent room, as he is very aware of this uh, this potential for a player to be in the mid area as well. Harrisers still need to find two more kills here, or the bomb plant would be wonderful. And again, there's a slow approach. While well, uh, they've only had one person on the bomb site, but now the cavalry has arrived, and we've got. Get wow. right, never mind, get right, has left the building. Again, now they need to push the sign and get the bomb down really, really fast. If the bomb goes down while they try and cross to the site, then they are going to be in a difficult position. But it looks like they are going to get the plant. Forrest is going to peek before his teammate comes in. It's going to be Exist Dozier. remaining now against four. He just took down three players. The only rifle on the team took down three. Now Simple's picked up a rifle. So is Kucha. They're just sharing the love. Exist comes in, but there's nothing to do. They, they only lost to Angel. And they were basically on eco. They were pretty much on eco there. Dozier and was also the only man with armor as well. And they survived with four people. It's, that's, that's incredible. Incredible stuff from Hellraisers. Now they've completely broken the economy of NIP. They kept doing damage. Damage and damage and damage. And then now... I mean, I said they needed to take three kills. That was, that was just to keep the money down for NIP, but <laughs> they actually managed to win the round, so this is incredible. The 2 one two resumes here for NIP, get right in the middle, and that's going to be a f another fast frag for Dozier on the B bomb site. Will that force the rotation? We've got three people for Hellraisers around the A bomb site, and two for Nip. Uh, they're going to stay here for a while while these guns are here. Forest will fall to simple, and that's going to be uh, one in each area for Nip as the A bomb site does become clear. So NIP have a. Obviously, a very tough time ahead now as they, they're going to go into the next buy round. You've you got to ask the question, what it, like if, if you're in NIP's shoes right now, what is the approach? Because if we look at their money, they can't really buy an AWP. They've got to stick to the rifles. But do they just stick to their very passive play? Do they take a risk, try to go aggressive in A main or B storage? Or maybe even get flushed to you know, play a 1-3-1 setup, sort of get aggressive towards middle? Or do they just play that, that safe style that they're so used to? It's... That's what they have to make the call of right now. And it looks like they're going to stick with the passive stuff um, that they are so used to. Yeah, so they're still playing the 2-1-2. And uh, Get Right is still in mid on his own. He's chosen the other side to where he normally plays. And you can see the T's are looking for him where he's been on previous rounds. So it's a good change for him. His uh, jumping will give away his position. And someone's going to look for him. Team Flash comes in. And that is an easy frag there to open up the middle of the site. Middle of this map, sorry. Yeah, this is really nice for Hellraisers. They're actually exploiting NIP setup really effectively. Simple with another couple kills. Amazing stuff there from the man. As now Freiburg is put to the test. That's actually the bomb down as well. And Freiburg has to kill three more players. He's got the bomb. This is not too far-fetched, but we'll have to see how Hellraisers handle this. They have grenades, and they sure as hell have some team players to They're waiting together. for the flank here from Markolov. In fact, no, he's just going to run out and beat. Oh my god, Freiburg getting two players. Almost the last one as well. That was incredible there. Almost. And that was just down to the fact that they didn't wait quite long enough. They were, they were just a little bit off sync. And that was almost very scary for them. I wonder, because Markloff was running towards the site. And I wonder if Angel peaked quickly because they expected uh, Freiburg to be facing where he heard the sound coming from. But still, Angel peaked on his own. He had another um, teammate above him. And that was two very fast 1v1s rather than a 2v1 there for for Freiburg, which allowed him to get two frags, and that was almost a round for Nip there. He, he basically got four kills by himself. Freiburg basically did like 20k of economic damage there. So that, that was actually imp very impressive. And uh, get right in a nice position. That's a free AK. Yes, please. Will he get the kill onto Angel now? The aim punch is a big deal, and it's actually going to pull it off anyway. So good stuff there from get right. And are we going to see what Hellraisers did to NIP happen the other way around now? Bam. Looks like we are as Freiburg does bring out the Juan Dig. And that, that, that was, that, those were two 
Uh, very nice plays there. The peak from the terrorist in into A main. There was a decoy thrown and a peak in the same way that Taz threw the flash and peaked before the flash went off, which made the uh, opponent look away. But Kucha is going to find the nade on uh, Get Right. And the two players, they could definitely still do this. They are against. They are up against two AKs, but there's no armor on Nip here. Freiburg does have a nade, which could take out Markloff if it goes in the right place. So in and if you go now, and uh, Markloff in a really good position, just not quite the health though. There is the kill onto Freiburg, it's on to exist now, and he's on the outer catwalk. He knows, position Markloff, there it is, reveals his position. And now Kucha just has to kill time, but he's not looking the right way, he's not looking, and Exodus gets the kill. It doesn't have a kit though, and that's going to be the round for Hellraisers, but at least a couple kills coming in the end. And we'll have to see how... Th there's been so much damage traded. Uh, there's so many people are dying right now. It's nuts. Yeah, let's have a look at the money for both teams here. Uh, it's surprising Kucha's looking at the wrong way. Um, I'm not sure if he's if he's wearing stereo headphones or what, but uh, uh, yeah. the, uh, there was a lot of running going on there, but never mind. They did get around anyway, and that's all important. So Hellraiser's looking strong on cash here. And uh, again, there's still going to be no AWP for NIP, and we'll see. that Now they've put two people in mid, finally. Yeah, this is good. I think Hellraisers were, they, they knew, they were exploiting the fact that Gero was just alone on white box all the time. Yeah. And uh, this is a really nice adjustment. Are they actually going to go for the counter boost? It looks like they are going for that. And it is actually Get Right pushed up there. It's going to drop in on top of Simple. There's no one in A main, and this is key information for NIP. This is a big advantage now, not just the man, but that info. And uh, Dozy are going to get caught from the back there. Fifth Lauren in the vents. This, this adaptation from NIP is, is working wonders so far. Far so good, but Forrest does go down, and now he's the only man in mid. Let's see the position of Fiflaren. Actually, he could get a surprise kill, but they're looking for him. You can see nades are coming in, and Fiflaren may have to change his position. It is, however, four on two, and Angel's only got two HP. So uh, this is going to be hard for Hellraisers. They're going to have to um, just see how much damage they can get done here. Looking at the money for the CTs, it's still not fantastic to say the least. And that is another kill there for Hellraisers from Kucha with uh, that two HP. But uh, Angel is going to fall down, so it's going to be. Kucha, last man standing here. Let's see a cross from the back, though. Unfortunate times for him, but good, good round there from NIP. I wonder what uh, Hellraisers are going to do now. Are they going to just keep things as they've been keeping them? Or, I mean, their, their money is, is really low now because so much damage has been done. Remember that round where Fryback just picked up four kills. Uh, that these, these kinds of rounds really have an impact on the game, and we're seeing that if not for that, uh, Hellraisers wouldn't be on this situation where they, th they lose us, they're, e they're on an eco. We've got full smokes in mid here, so uh, right, it's going to take an aggressive position however, he's going to be playing for sound, trying to work out what's going on as he saw that kill on piss on Simple when he only had a few 2000. He's going to push the smoke but he is going to fall down. Two people from Hellraisers going through those vents and Freiburg will try and uh, protect those. That's going to be a meaty nade on Dozier, straight down to 50 HP. Yeah, so NIP taking the gamble with Get Right, pushing through that smoke. Uh, expecting uh, expecting the players to maybe be distracted. And Forrest is going to take the kill onto Angel. The returns, though, from Hellraisers, it's not looking so good for NIP. As we do have a very weakened defense. And Kucha just taking pot shots now, exists long range. It's going to take him down. And I can't see a world in which Freiburg is able to save this one. We'll have to see. Forrest does take down Simple. That's going to make it a little bit easier for Freiburg. Does come in. Great reaction there onto Dozier as he makes his way up short. The bomb does get, get a planted hit. We've got smokes to cut off his angles as well. So uh, this is not going to be easy for Freiburg at all. Freiburg going in now, though. Close to the red container. Two players on the same angle. Freiburg's going to be fast, but Markov is faster. And we have another round for Hellraisers. This is a very, very big... T half from them and oh look at the money for the CTs yep. 2400 2100 they could do they could actually 2700 do the thing where they buy an AWP yeah okay there <laughs> it is I was they? yeah they can do that because they've been keeping the money down so much for Hellraisers and this evens the money up that extra extra amount of cash doesn't mean anything so they might as well use it to do, do some economic damage and uh, that's perfect and uh, we're going to see now exist trying to get the shots off but it's gonna be Freiburg that actually gets the kill. If they can actually secure B storage and the weapon, um, this might this might be doable for NIT. Indeed, it might. And against this anti eco, Hellraisers are spread out all over the place. Dozier does get the first frag on Fifth Flower to bring it back to 4 4. 
But again, they are spread out, and that means they are going to be susceptible to these guns more so than if they were together. Oculus going to tease the door while his uh, teammates take a tentative approach to map control. And they have to be careful that they aren't, they aren't overly careful and find themselves creeping around with not enough uh, time to actually plant the bomb here. We can see the bomb is indeed in a very passive position here on Kucha. Oh, it's all about not running into the AWP. Exist does whiff a shot there. And of course, he's a dangerous man. They've got to isolate him, figure out where he is. Exist, though, going to get smoked off. This is exactly how you got to do it. Hellraisers playing it right. But there's Exist with the frag. There's three more players that might be approaching him fairly soon. Oh, from the back. Nice shot there from Exist. Good reaction as he is spotting another player. The bomber gets taken down. Great frag there from Exist. And now Simple is in a one-on-one. -on -one and that bomb is down. He's got no time on the clock. Oh, barely not killing Freiburg. Four points of health remaining. Going to go for the short thing and get that plant. That's going to allow Freiburg to get a little bit closer. Let's see if Freiburg can do this. Or a Simple. That health advantage is too much. And a 15 health remaining for Simple. But... He is going to secure the round there for Hellraisers. And it was a close one. Definitely a good investment with that AWP. Yeah, that was carnage. And, and again, so so spread out. They uh, weren't in a position to really push properly because they were all over the place. And then time ran out and uh, becomes a total mess there for Hellraisers. But they do manage to eke out the round. And with only three rounds remaining, it's not going to be as painful as it otherwise would be if that were earlier on in this first half. Looking at the money on Hellraisers now, in fact they are pretty much broke as well as the yep. CT team and the CT team will get the first frag of this round. That is what the AWP is about. They got the damage. That, it was a gamble, but it was they might as well. There's no other reason there's no reason not to. And we're gonna see that Hellraisers now in an awkward spot. They lose another man. They're they're down one man. Make that and that make that down two men now as Get Right comes in with a kill. And he might just find another one. There's one very weak and there it is. Get right will finish him off. And that is a nice round there from NIP, who had a very terrible buy. But thanks to the AWP uh, pickup from Exist and the, f the clutch moments uh, from him, it is now eco time for Hellraisers, and NIP could possibly bring themselves back to 6-9. They absolutely must. In fact, yes, you're right, DDK. This has completely desec desecrated the Hellraisers' money. It's just annihilated them. They have gone from... Well, they just broke. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> There's no money in the bank. There's nothing left um, in the tank, but that that buy you just you just might as well like it's just a might as well thing. And you can actually run into uh, get right now does get dropped down by simple. So aggressive play, the gamble from get right, not exactly paying off too too much. They did get the info though, so NIP can play well if they play well with nades and position, then they can definitely shut this down. They can herd them, they can herd them like cattle. And Alvarez is gonna go for the B play it seems. There's lots of creeping going on here. Just looking, trying to find some information, as are the CTs. Just uh, patiently does it, and Freiburg is going to spot an arm there and uh, get the passive smokes down of a counter flash for his, by his teammate there to stop that initial push. It's going to be three more Hellraisers trying to get into that site, but can they get any frags? It's going to be all about Freiburg at the moment, taking some nice kills. Uh, Forrest does go down. And Freiburg already with two. Can it be another one? It's not that simple. Going to pull up the burst there. But it will be uh, for Flarin and Freiburg to get those kills to secure the round. As we have the, po the possibility now for NIP for that 6-9. And this match has been fantastic from just the position of economic battling. Just f There has been, I mean, there was one period where Hellraiser started to build bank. But ever since uh, Freiburg did that four-man, they started to really get things back together again. But look at these Molotovs. They are, I think this is the first time they've actually been rich. And they've gone back to the 2 one two now, so just get right in the middle area. It's uh, the change to one two two that really paid off for them and got allowed them to start getting some rounds in the bag. But for this last round, they're going to change it up again and make it 2-1-2. Two, two. But um, Hellraiser's not being as aggressive in mid as we have seen from them in previous rounds, adjusting to the adjustment from NIP. So this may, in fact, pay off for them. Now, one of the things I would love to know, and I'd love to just ask uh, NIP, um, it's a new jump spot. If uh, if if I was able to, like, you know, be be in, in the, the vent with them, is like, you know, or the the team speak or whatever, just ask them why they go for certain setups, and what is it that they read from how races. But we're going to see the delayed mid take uh, as they do take down get right. This has happened before. This has happened uh, before to NIP. It usually doesn't go so well when they lose middle like this. Look at how far away the, the two. 
to uh, or all the NIP players are from each other. It's a big, big gap in middle, and Hellraisers are filling that gap right now. Forest might make the peak, and here it goes. Got to come out with a frag, and in fact, he is going to like, exist though with a nice shot. Maybe the second one, but nope. It's going to be Kucha to take down Exist. As things get quite awkward here for NIP, it's just Fifth Lauren left against two players. Can Fifth Lauren do this? He's got a very weak Angel, fully health Markov, but he's going to be planting the bomb most likely, so Fifth Lauren does have time to get close. There it is. If he can get this one on one, he would be golden. Looking for that jump spot over the. Uh Barrel to get the information, but there's only one play there, so that's not going to be happening on this occasion. He's looking for the second one, but can he find him here? Markolov is standing on the bomb, and he's just going to go around as Fiflaren does uh, rotate around the other side. Fiflaren going to try and get Angel on the side of the head, but uh, the adjustments from Hellraisers here will allow them to take that frag down, and it is going to be 9-5 to Hellraisers. And on this second half, Nip are going to have to do the economical damage that we saw from Hellraisers on their T side, and they're going to have to keep the AWP out of Simple's hands. This is uh, very interesting, very interesting indeed. Perhaps uh, NIP's CT, CT uh, strats exploited efficiently there by, by Hellraisers. Simple beasting already on a T side for yep. Hellraisers. 21 kills next closest to him would be Kutra and Dozier with 12. And on the, on the uh, NIP side, we've got Freiburg um, catching up and surpassing Getright, who had the early frags there in the mid area. This is the thing, he's an amazing rifler as he is uh, an AWPer. And uh, we'll have to see now if NIP can get themselves a start that they need to start uh, recovering this game. And we're going to see uh, three players for Hellraisers towards B. We can, of course, boost up into the vents. And uh, a bit of a sort into the squeaky areas where we do have get right at squeaky. So it's all very tentative for now. But Dozier might just run into th uh, Forest right there. Oh, did he? S I th think he saw maybe a pixel of the weapon. He knows right now. He's going to edge onto Forest, takes him down. There's more players to be found, though. Dozier under a bit of pressure. Drop back for now. And the players all over the place. Nice shot there onto Fifth Lauren's head. And that is key information. We see the rotation coming in right now. Dozier with another sick frag. Dozier going out of his mind right now with the USP, holding them back whilst his teammates come in to reinforce. And things just couldn't get worse for the Swedes right now. They will recover the bomb, but the losses were heavy. Dozier went huge in that round, but it's still... Uh, Nip have got back control of the bomb. They're both quit pretty low on 30 or less. And uh, Forrest wondering how Dozier worked him out there, but he will have to watch the replay and see that his gun did expose his position there. And it's going to be a four on two here as the bomb is rotating away from the B bomb site. He's just going to look to bait here while the bomb, they'll try and get the bomb down on A to get that $800 per person bonus. And there's pretty much nobody on A apart from our Angel's got the uh, A main cover. But oh, will, but will he, he hear the door squeaky. open? That is smart. That's really smart. And Angel will hear the bomb get... The plant sound, but that's a little bit too late. The bomb's down now, guaranteed for MIP. But that's really the the least of, that they could have accomplished there. I mean, Dozier, man, what a sick round! Great triple. Yeah, great Dozier, triple. Dozier went nuclear in that round, and that was um, great recon there and execution of Forest. So the slightest the slightest error there from Forest on that corner gave uh, Hellraisers a massive edge, and the more heads were popped from Dozier afterwards, and that was a hugely important round uh, from Hellraisers. Looking to string together their second win in a row here. Yeah, I mean, they may not necessarily be able to qualify, but they started sh to show some really great games, and uh, they're going to start being a little bit feared on cash. We'll have to see now what can be accomplished with the P250s. Again, NIP going to be focusing on trying to get some real economic damage in. Maybe if they hit the site hard and fast, they can get the plant down as well. Uh, Fry, they're going to go in, but the, the aggressive move there is going to catch off a lot of NIP players. And we're going to see Getra coming in from Squeaky. He does manage to make himself a kill onto Angel, as we do have a three on three situation. Certainly the advantage for Hellraiser still. However, that bomb is, is certain to go down. And already a lot of damage done for NIP. Nice! Get right with the spray. We'll find himself the kill there on too simple. And Scooter does come in the side. Can he time this well, though? It's all about timing for future. Does indeed time it very well, and it's all now on him. As Sif does take down Dozier, and Kucha gets the return, swaps out the weapon, doesn't have a kit. This is absolutely terrible for Kucha right now. There's no kit to be seen, and this is going to be the round for an IP. Unbelievable. Exist even picking up the final frag, and will he get away with a weapon as well? He will. That is amazing. 
so cost efficient that round for NIP. Yeah, Nip have the money in on their side as well. Now let's see what Forrest is going to pick up here. 4,300 in the bank. It's going to go just with the pistol as we've seen from him before, but this time he's going to go for the P250. Um, he definitely likes the USPS, but uh, since he is spawning with a Glock, he's going to go for the P250 instead, which also has got a really good recoil. And we're going to see uh, Dozer get tagged quickly. He's in trouble here. He's only got 2 HP. He's going to go down to Forrest as well. $300 for that kill. And uh, they are going to take the B-bomb site very quickly, NIP. All the team are here. It's going to have enough time to get the uh, post plant positions, and this is going to be a very hard round for uh, Hellraisers to do any damage. And there's still so many grenades for NIP. This is just an impossible situation. But they have to go, f uh, you know, to just see if they can get some more damage. They don't have to go in for the, the retake. They don't, I mean, they're never going to get the bomb defused. But if they can get some exit kills again, it's about keeping that money down. And if they can do that, NIP's, uh, the momentum that they're trying to accomplish here, they're actually able to play against that. And as soon as they do get their buy round, as soon as they do get their luck, they can be much closer to forcing NIP to, to an eco. And, uh, but NIP, they're doing well right now. They haven't lost anybody. They clean it all up. And we see Forrest was sticking to the pistol. He does that very often. And we might even see the AWP buy from Forrest. Maybe? Nope, goes to the AK. I like that too. That's also very nice. I think he's going for the. I think he's going for the versatility versus the Eco here. Even if they choose the AWP in further rounds, it's uh, just to kind of keep them out of trouble. Potentially, might be why he's doing it to keep them out of trouble in case uh, Hellraisers get up to something funky here on this Eco. But it's going to be fairly standard here. We've got a one-two-two coming in with a uh, simple playing the rotation position from mid to the A bomb site, and the Nip are going to take it slow, but they're going to take it uh, a bit faster than we saw from Hellraisers when they uh, were the people with the guns versus the anti Eco. For us with the Molotov there, they're timing the grenades very effectively. There's the Molotov for the back boxes as well. It's completely coated in fire, the back of the site. And Molotov after Molotov after Molotov. There's Forrest in on the site, wrapping around the side. And Markov <laughs> somehow surviving a forklift. There's two frags. That shouldn't have happened. And there's Fifth Lauren. They're going to finish off the last one. But still, uh, you know, two quick little kills there. And that's going to be very pleasant for Hellraisers as they, of course, they're not. They're not keeping the money down hugely, but if they get like a really huge round uh, right now, they could really make a massive dent and uh, NIP are far from secure. Yeah, so there's a small delay in Dozier buying a, a rifle there, which um, I wonder if he, they were considering getting the AWP for simple, but that would have left Dozier, Dozier with no um, armor. So they've gone for an M4 buy instead. And we have some early action here. Just some more banging coming in. And Markov's going to be boosted up in the middle of the site. Get right. Hasn't even opened a door, and he's got 12 HP here, so he's not having a good day. Definitely not his birthday today. So we'll have to see now if Hellraiser has figured this out. They do already rotate simple back towards the A-bomb site. So they have a nice setup, and in the nades go. Hellraiser could defend well, though. They do have the players. They've got the bodies behind this site. In goes Freiburg from the side that nobody's looking his way. He's running into the flames, and there comes the kill from Markolov. And things are looking very bad here for NIP. Fifth Lauren remains coming in from A main slowly. And he, let's see if he finds something. There's three players left. Hellraisers with a very nice round so far. That is clean. I have a question for you, DDK. Yes. Did Nip just execute Happy's uh, no. cash strat? No. 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 I saw some X coming out. I saw Molotov coming out towards the back of the red boxes. Or was it like a play on it? Maybe it, it was. It was a very. It was a different, different variation. It was. It wasn't that quite. It was. It was the same idea, but it was executed differently. Okay. It is eight twelve in favor of Hellraisers here. This is their pick, and we've seen what they could do on this map versus Titan. Nip doing a lot better than Titan did yesterday, but they are still on a four round deficit here as Cooch does get boosted into vents, and they're going to have three men. On mid and one per bomb site. Love this. This is. Oh, and they're going to go for the boost here. Simple again at the old tricks. And this could, if if it's quick enough, let them know what's happening before it happens. If they spot, if, they, if he gets a kill in the main here and he sees nobody else, they should be able to realize what's happening. And there it is. The frag coming in from Simple. There's one more player at Squeaky. Get right as usual. But in comes the play onto the B site, and they know now. But NIP have done a really good job in in actually hiding this strategy, and they have every chance to take the site. In come the kills. From Freiburg, does take down Dozier, as now Forrest is shooting into CT spawn through the smoke. So they got good cover going. The bomb gets planted at the back of the site. After plant, three on three. Exactly what NIP are playing for. And it's not going to happen to Hellraiser, it seems. They're going to back away. Good damage there, though, through that wall. The wall bang. Um, putting a player on around 
30 HP, but Nip will take this round. And look at, let's look at the CT economy here. It is in tatters at the moment. We've got Markov with $50, Angel with $1,400, and Kucha with $2,800. So uh, it's a sick it, cash match. They're a bit all over the place, and yes, it is. Once again, all, all the last seven days, which have been back and forth, back and forth, in pretty much every match, um, save but bar Hellraiser versus Titan, maybe. So uh, again, we're seeing a war of economy here. One that Nip are winning, but can they win the rounds? Yeah, I mean, Hellraisers did... Uh have been doing some nice dents here and there, but we can see that they are really stretched, really, really stretched. Um, actually decided to buy up because they saved the uh, the weapon set. So if they don't do, if this round is clean for NIP, stuff starts getting really dangerous for Hellraisers, and NIP probably will tie up the game. In fact, they, I'm, I'm guaranteeing that they're going to tie up the game if they win this round. Guaranteed, uh, clean, guys. Clean. It's a guarantee. If it's clean, if it's messy, if they lose like you know four players, then it's no guarantee anymore. But but we'll have to see if they're able to do it clean. They do have a lot of Molotovs. I think they might be uh, eventually looking to towards the, the A, and a kind of an A set play of their own creation. As uh, they're just waiting for the initial ag aggressions. They know that Hellraisers like to throw that in. They may have even seen the match where Hellraisers defeated Titan and would have seen that Titan lost a, a lot of the, the game because of the rounds where they got caught with their pants down on those set plays. Nobody likes to get caught with their pants down. It's very embarrassing. We have Simple on a nice defensive position here. This will shield him from most of the flashbangs that come in. Looks like he's going to hold one and get ready to do the anti-flashes. Get right does set up for a smoke here. So I think really we're going to have the set play coming in for the ninjas in pajamas. They they could always go back for, for middle, but it looks like they are going to go for this. Fifth floor and actually picking off a kill onto Angel. And in come the grenades now. Look at that. The Molotov there for the corner. Markov has to move away. And Forrest is already looking the angle. It's planned. And now Hellraisers. They've got to rely on Simple making at least a couple frags. There's number one, but he can't do better than that. Now Dozy is left with a very tough situation. And I don't know if he's, if he's going to be able to pull this one off. I mean, three players. Bomb down. Florian got two frags there on the B-bomb site, which made Dozier's rotation really, really slow because that, that, that was basically the B-bomb site down. So uh, he was stuck in no man's land for a while. And this retake is going to be hard, if not impossible, versus three. He does go down to Freiburg at the back of the A-bomb site, and that's going to be Nip. One round to the better. Great money in the bank, and he'll raise his on an eco. Yeah, that, that, was, that, was really, that was pretty clean. That was cl uh, clean enough. Uh, they thought they made a lot of money in that round, and... Now we're going to see Hellraisers going for that eco, and it's me curious to see how they how they go for the adjustment um, in the following rounds. Whether they stick to the same setups, or I, I I would like to see that that mid aggression from them again. But NIP have been really good at waiting. I think NIP have, have been saying in some of these rounds that they're always going to be ready for this. And the round that that it was pulled off, we actually oh actually yeah Markov getting a kill, picking up the AK. Maybe uh, maybe some damage can be done here. Maybe not. <laughs> he is going to fall. And it's going to be the bomb site in the in uh, Nips control now. As we have an exit from B. These two players, nothing to lose. They haven't bought anything. All they've got is USPs and uh, faces to eat bullets. So Nips going to have a bit of time to spread out here and just hope they don't uh, lose any players. Exist and Forest, the ones at risk here from the headshots, with uh, 64 and 37 HP respectively. But it is going to be. A solid victory there for Nip, who just keep building that bank now. And uh, Hellraisers will be back on the buy. Still can't afford the AWP, though. Yeah, so... Hellraisers could stop the madness right now, but... Those are grenades. Not looking so, so good. They, they have grenades, but they're not fully stocked up here. They've only got, what, three smokes or so? And they just used two of them immediately to start the round. So it's going to be hard to hold off the, the taking angles from NIP. Uh, NIP can really get take some liberty in this round if they if they want to. Nice push there into B storage. They they made the play three men towards that. They they and they actually now know that there must be players a lot of players towards A. So they're rotating at least one or two now for that A play. They might be in time here. It is coming in. Angel can't hold on. They do have still Markov on the site. He needs to try to delay this, but the teammates have come in to play. Kucha in from the pickup truck. Get right though, good spray down. He's got six points of health left. I'm just not confident with that. It's those six points of health, it's going to be so hard for him. But look at the health on Hellraisers. Markov 19, Kucha 23. It's just Hellraisers just need, need to make sure that they don't give Get Right 
a 1v1. And Get Right's just going to hide for as long as possible here and uh, give the CTs the impression that he has gone towards the B bomb site. You can oh see the rotation God. coming in from Kucha here. <gasps> How is he doing this? How is he getting behind all of them? Get right, almost doing something incredible. Um, wow. I thought for fir at the first, you know, he's just like waiting there, just maybe someone will peek him and he'll get a frag. But, but then there was like this moment, there was this m magical moment where he almost moved completely undetected by them. That was great. We were in the twilight zone, DDK. I know. But we're back and it's 11.13. Hellraiser's two rounds ahead. Nip closing the gap bit by bit. But Hellraiser's are eking ever so close to that magical 16. And uh, Forrest is going to be the first to pick up the AWP in the second half here. So uh, we'll can see if he manages to connect with any faces. We've only got one person on the A bomb site for Hellraisers at the moment. They have been playing a 1-2-2 set up for a few rounds now. Okay, right, going to just uh, underhand the nade through that smoke, but it won't connect with anyone just yet. Tentative games here from uh, Nip. They've been quite aggressive in previous rounds, but now um, Freiberg's going to go down towards the B bomb site where we've seen uh, Fifth Baron playing when he's been pushing the fakes while Nipper playing towards A. But it's going to be Freiberg on B this time. Does fall, and we're going to see a four man push potentially here from Nip. Yeah, nice nice frag there from Angel. And uh, this is this is all getting stopped before it can start. And in goes Angel. Uh, Angel again does get the frag on to exist. And Hellraiser's really doing a good job so far. I mean, they've got. Fifth Lauren and Get Right still to worry about, but they got nice possessions. Angel might make another frag. There it is. It is the triple, and he might get oh the quad kill coming in as well. Angel with that A push, that A main play. That just that hurt. That really hurt NIP. And now they do have money still in the bank to to get some to get some guns on the board, but. This is getting really dangerous. That did hurt indeed. And what's going to hurt even more is that now Simple has the AWP. And if you look at the kill screen, oh. he is almost on a 30 bomb here. Nobody on either team anywhere close to him right now. Simple is playing out of his skin every match for Hellraisers. And now he's got the AWP in his hands. Things are only going to get worse here for Nip. And we do see NIP trying to take more control of a the a, uh, main area this time around. Angel on a good position to deal with that, though. And I think NIP might just have a really good entry here. Hellraisers will have three players to deal with this. The other two are really far away. So it's a five versus three here. NIP got to be quick. Nice entry there from Freiburg. Does get taken down by Angel. Angel can still do so much more though. Does another quick little kill there as Kucha comes in from the outer catwalk. But it is now a two on two. So it was a good situation for NIP. They didn't get the bomb down yet though. In comes Simple from the back. There it is. The frag onto fifth. Lauren exists. Gets the one-on-one -on -one against Dozier. Going to go for the sprint now onto the other side. Smart stuff there from Exist. Quick thinking. Nice. Smoke to cover his, uh, his run to that B site. Got his Nikes on right now. As uh, simple as being very careful. He's picked very up the AK as well. Be so more versatile here. It's all about who can outsmart one another. And simple does throw in the nade. Very nice open plant there from Exist. Simple. He knows that Exist could be anywhere right now. He had so much time, but he's going to have to go for the gamble. There it is. Does spot his opponent now Exist. Over he's got time to room. find him. He's got a kit. He needs to go fast, though. He's got to go for it. He's got to risk it. In with the CZ. Oh, and he gets the frag. He's he not going to make it. He doesn't have time. He doesn't have time. And it is done by NIP. They win the round. By the skin of their teeth, they make it happen. They win the round, 14. and Hellraisers lose the AWP. Yep. Two very important points here. And now both teams on the verge of an eco. This round, this round could win Hellraisers the game, or potentially uh, buy oh, NIP a tie game. Oh, they're going to throw the AWP to Simple, and someone's going to be naked here. It's going to be Markolov. No armor to speak of, just running around in his boxer shorts right now with uh, a FAMAS and three nades. So this is do or die for both teams, as DDK just said. We do have full nades on the NIP team. We saw a great push for B from Simple last round as well, but Nip were nowhere to be seen all around the A bomb site. And uh, <coughs> we'll see what they choose to do this time. Again, we've got NIP expecting an eco here. You can see the positioning is all very, very passive here. We're expecting a push, That's a kind of a, the CT's trying to get the early frags in. And we have got Simple creeping up against B again. But uh, I do wonder if we're going to see the early rotation from the teammate towards the A site. Last time we had simple hold this angle. Oh, the timing! 
just misses, and that's going to be Nippet. Are they going to be forced to push here, or are they going to uh, just calm down? Simple is going to go back. This is smart. Stay with really his teammate smart. for support. They could even try to boost one of them into the vents to have a fast response towards A and simply leave simple in vent room. But it's like uh, none of that. They're going to leave two players on B, and NIP make the split. The A split is coming. They haven't done this before. NIP going in. Cannot find the entry just yet. Denied by Kucha. Denied by Markov. In comes Angel from Forklift. Gets the frag onto Forest. Fifth Lauren can't deliver. And there it is. 15 to 12. And despite Hellraiser's bleeding out the end of the round, they're all alive. And that's what counts. The only person who went down for Hellraiser's is Markov. And he's the only person who didn't have armor in that round. Yeah, that's a pretty nice, pretty nice situation. Now NIP, look at this. Terrible buy. Uh, what do they do with it? I mean... They could just go for a fast set play on A, just 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 run it in. They could just go for that, but uh, might want to actually slow down as the uh, the grenades are coming into play here. The smoke from Hellraisers. This is a disaster for whatever. It's going to be two massive scalps here for for Hellraisers if they can close out this match. They've already left one player in B storage. They they can actually rotate someone around uh, immediately. So NIP, they have to go in. They're going to make this successful. They have to deliver in this round, or they are done against Hellraisers on cash. Two frags, three frags, four frags from Hellraisers, and a fifth iron finally with a return for NIP. But there's still so much to be done there. Picks up the M4, still with all the armor. And Markov is gunning for him right now, and he's going to get the kill. Great play there from Hellraisers. 16 to 12. They will defeat NIP on... That was that was such an entertaining map of cash. That was beautiful stuff. I loved that. I enjoyed every moment of that. Yeah, I think the best matches are when we have back and forth like that and people just can't get their economy off the ground. We saw Nip start to kind of edge towards a good economy in that second half, but they were behind on rounds. So eventually he caught up with them and just the back and forth continued. So it was great play there. And good that you could see they were all kind of on the CT side. They wanted the AWP, but they just couldn't reach far enough to... Uh, buy it until they bought it on that round. Markov had no armor, and only he went down, and that really helped Hellraiser's put a nip on a buy where they only had pistols and Kevlar. So most of them didn't have um, even helmets there, so it was a really difficult end there for NIP, but a great match from both teams. I, I, just, I just loved it. I, I would love to go back in and, and just redo that match and just like pause it in loads of spots and just like get to the you know, nitty gritty details. But fortunately, we don't have time for that. We do have two more matches here tonight for the European. I mean, this is the penultimate day of Super Week for the yes. Face League. So and two more matches. And we're going to do the knife giveaway now. It's oh. going to be it's going to be the Huntsman Crimson Web. Maybe we can have a quick look at it here so you can see what uh, one of you will be winning shortly. This is going to be open to uh, the entire um, chat as well. So. All comers, you will see the um, command on the raffle page. So definitely on the schedule page. Sorry, it's not a raffle page. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> check that out. Check that out during the break. Um, you uh, you have to be following the channel in order to win. If you're not following the channel, we will roll again and pick someone else. So uh, make sure you click that follow button, guys. We will see you on the other side. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, 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 wait. Uh, uh. Guys, we have Fnatic and Dignitas coming up next. So bound to be a smashing match. So uh, just, just to let you know what's coming up after the break. So stay tuned for that one. Also, good luck on the, on the knife, and uh, we'll see you very shortly.